Oh, my love is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. Oh, my love is like the melody that's sweetly played in tune. As fair up thou, my bonny lass, so deep in love am I, and I will love thee still, my dear, till all the seas gang dry. Robert Burns, Scotland Shakespeare. As all the issue folk will proudly attest to, he was born here in 1759, the eldest son of a tenant farmer. And, as all the priest folk will proclaim, he lived and died here in 1796. His name conjures up images of starry-eyed lovers in red roses. Many seem as a romantic and sensitive soul. Mr Burns, however, was a little more than his short-bred tin image lets on. His work was actually censored on a regular basis, deemed too vulgar for the God-fearing society in which he lived. These poems dealt with bodily functions and sexual encounters. Titles include Nine Inches Will Please a Lady and How Do I Lose My Maiden Head. There are like, it's language in there that's as shocking as some of the uh, M&M sort of today has been mentioned. Of. But generally, what, they were only published after his death. They were published in 1800. First of all, in a, an edition by the Crook Allen Fencibles, which is a gentleman's club that he was part of in Edinburgh, rather a wild gentleman's club with drinking and stories and that kind of thing. Robert Burns also had some very outspoken political views. Some even describe him as communist. He lived in a society where the church and the aristocracy held sway, and he was forever denouncing his institutions and letters to both friends and newspapers. My God, what a reform I would make among the sons and even the daughters of men. Down immediately should go fools from the high places where a misbegotten chance has perked them up. As vocal as Burns was about these institutions, it's interesting to note that they did actually work for one himself. Customs and excise under Her Majesty's service. But perhaps it was working here that affirmed his beliefs. Here he would be privy to all the corruption and vice. Burns also supported the French revolutionaries in their bid to overthrow the aristocracy of France. He was known to sing Sa Ira, We Will Win, the most popular and patriotic song on the French Revolution. He was very much for equality and even in these poetry that comes through that the um, gentry got off with a lot more than the, than the poor people. The poor people would uh, get, get into trouble in that way and then would be outcasts while so the gentry could get, get away with a great deal more of that. Burns was also a serial womaniser. His biographer Ian McIntyre remarked, he was incapable of addressing a woman without placing a hand on her thigh. He fathered a total of 12 children. Only four of these were by his lawful wife Jean. The rest, illegitimate. To note that those who idolise him today may have condemned him if he'd lived in their time. Robert Burns has influenced both modern day and 18th century Scotland. In his lifetime, this ploughman poet became a symbol of hope for the common man, and today he acts as a major tourist attraction in Ayrshire, bringing in much needed revenue. His presence is clear throughout his hometown of Ayr. Numerous pubs named after him and his work and the festival held every year in his honour. All dare from there a tune surpasses for honest men and bonnie lasses.